We welcome you to Mass at St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Donald Zastro and Joanne Manuel. We have a few announcements. <coughs> welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Parish. For our newcomers and visitors, if you would like more information about St. Michael, welcome packets are located at the greeters table. Please remember to take a bulletin for parish updates. The Boy Scout Troop 777 is having their Christmas fun wreath fundraiser. Please be sure to see the bulletin that was sent via flop notes and website. The troop will be also starting collecting all used clothing, shoes, stuffed animals, bathroom and bed linen. Please drop it off in the cart in the vestibule. Volunteers are needed after every Mass to help clean up after communion. Please help in the kitchen, please meet in the kitchen area. If you are interested in joining any of the ministries here at St. Michael's, please see the ladies at the greeters table. The office will be closed on Monday, October 12th. As we prepare for Mass, let us turn off our cell phones and observe a moment of silence. processional hymn is gathered as one. Please stand. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and the kingdom of your blood. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray in all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the name of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken, on that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. I will live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance in every circumstance and in all things. I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Good 
to St. Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I prepared my banquet, my calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who are invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But the man was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him in hands and feet and cast him in the darkness outside, where there be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. says it's on. There it is. Wow. It took forever to kick in. Anyway, wasn't that good to hear a human voice? Did we all forget we weren't supposed to say? That's <laughs> uh, all right. I'm not a cop. Don't worry about it. In our readings today, the people are talking about the vision of heaven, especially the first one from Isaiah. In the time of the Old Testament, and for most of the history of the human race. Every one of the human beings on the planet lived within a short distance of starvation. They had to fight, they had to work, they had to scrape, do everything they could to find food to eat during any one day. And that's all they worried about was that one day. Can I get enough for me and my family to eat? Can I find work to get to eat? And the one thing that they had that they got free food, and they had good wine, and they didn't have to worry about it, was at a wedding feast. So we always see in the scriptures, heaven is like the wedding feast. Heaven is like a banquet with choice wines and good food like we see in Isaiah today. Because that was the only thing they could imagine for heaven. Free food, good drink, and they didn't, have to, they didn't have to work for it. It just went, and there it was. So their vision of heaven was that. We have everything so much today, we don't have a vision of heaven. People got a vision of heaven just sitting around on a cloud playing a harp. That's boring. I don't want that. So when we see Isaiah, Isaiah is talking to the people about what is to come. That they are going to be taken out of the slavery that they're in the bondage that they're in. And they're going to enjoy this banquet. What Isaiah doesn't tell them is he's probably talking about after they're dead. But it gives them hope. It gives them a vision. And God will take care of everything. Wipe away our tears. No more pain and suffering is what that means. No more death. So Isaiah is talking about heaven way back in the day before Jesus. So today we get into the gospel and Jesus takes, once again, some parables to talk to the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now, we have seen two of the four parables that he uses already. Last week, he had the parable of the vineyard owner who wanted to collect his due from the rent, and he had killed his son. The week before, 
we had the two sons. One said, no, I'm not going, and he felt guilty and went. The other said, yes, I'm going and never did. But each one of them ended with Jesus telling the chief priests and scribes of the people who thought they had an expressway into heaven, a free ticket, that they weren't going. That others who they thought were unclean and even Gentiles who they thought were animals weren't going to have we're going to go to heaven before them. So today he continues that theme in a much greater way and in a way that puts it even better because he talks about something that gives them an idea of heaven. Before he was talking about work, before he was talking about things on this earth, now he's moved into their idea of heaven, the wedding banquet. And he gives not one but two parables in our gospel today. And these two parables are just like the other in symbolism of who they represent. But at the wedding time, at the time of Jesus and before, weddings happen in a certain way. Time as we know it, controlling our lives down to the nanosecond or microsecond or whatever, didn't exist. When it happened, it happened. It's like they say island time or reservation time on the Indian reservations. There was a priest I know, and he said, yeah, he would get to, he would get to the church in the wintertime on the reservation, and he would start the fire and the, the stove and get the place warm, and he would go out and he'd ring the bell that they could all hear. And he said, two days later, they would have mass <laughs> because the people would slowly come in as they were called, and they would have mass two days later. Reservation time. So in Mexico, manana. Anyway, that happened back then because there were no clocks. There were no time keeping anything. You went by the sun and not even the day, you went by the season. So when you were gonna have a wedding, you would send out two sets of invitations. You would send out the first invitation to say, be ready, be ready. And they may get something else at that time I'll talk about in a minute. So you knew a wedding was coming. Now, at that first invitation, you said yes or no, I'm coming. One way or the other, are you coming, yes or no? And you gave your answer. Now, if it was a family member, then your mom would probably come visit you or somebody and make you feel guilty and you had to go. But it was a king inviting you, you couldn't say no. You had to go. There were no excuses except death. Then the servants would go back and report to the king. These many people are coming, these people aren't. So then the king would send out tailors to all the guests that were going to come. And the tailors would make them a special wedding garment out of the finest material that the king sent them. So you had a custom-made outfit for the wedding. You didn't have to pay for it. You didn't have to go down to the tuck shop and get those tight little shoes and cram your feet in there and be miserable during the whole wedding. You had a custom-made outfit just for you. So you have this wedding garment sitting in your house. And you're waiting for the invitation that's going to come and says, now, come and come. Come and be ready. Well, if you live far out, it's like that bell on the reservation, the priest would ring. You would get the invitation, you would go in, but those lying furthest out might take three or four days to get there. Then when everybody was assembled, you'd have the wedding. Now, if you were the smart person and you respected the host, the king, you would not wear that wedding garment until you got there for the wedding. But some people thought it was so great, they wanted to be seen in it, they would wear it to work. They would wear it out in the fields. And we're talking long garments down here that would get dragged in the mud, dragged in the dirt, and whatever else is in the street from the animals. So you show up with a wedding garment that's dirty. What have you just done? You've insulted the king right slapped him in the face 
because you did not respect him. Now, if you got the second invitation and said, I'm not coming now, I changed my mind. It was the same thing. You insulted him, slapped him in the face. After he'd given you this wedding garment, I was going to feed you and already prepared a place for you. No, most nobody ever did that. Because why? Free food, free good wine. For days, a wedding lasts eight days back then. Thank God it doesn't do that today. But it lasted eight days. You got to eat and drink for free for eight days. So nobody's going to say no to the second invitation. But it shows in our gospel story today, they all said no. Nobody said yes to the second invitation. Some said no to the first invitation. No, I'm not going to go because I'm going to go work. No, I'm not going to go because I have to wash my hair today. <laughs> Some flimsy excuses. Okay, the king dealt with it. They didn't get a wedding on it. He didn't set a place for them. But those who said yes, he got a wedding, they got a wedding on it, he set a place for them. Then they tell him, no, we're not coming. That is a major insult. And the way this did it, the people did it here, because he's a king, and all of them said no. They said to him, essentially, we don't like you, we want you dead, and we're not going to follow you anymore. There's an insurrection, a rebellion. That's why the king sends out the troops and kills them all. Because he didn't, couldn't have a rebellion. So then the king says, I got all this food, I got all this drink. Okay, you guys that work for me, go out and invite everybody you can find. Can you imagine? Everybody. But what does it say? He gave them wedding garments too. This guy has fast tailors. <laughs> They're sitting there measuring as they come through the door and say, it'll be ready in another day or so. That's fast back then. So he gets them all in their wedding garments that come in, and they have the feast. The king comes out to see who's come in. He wants to meet all his guests. He's a good politician. And he finds a guy without one. Didn't have a wedding garment. What does this say to him? It says, he's crashed the party. He wasn't invited. He snuck in somehow, and he's only there for the food and drink. Not to respect the king at the wedding of his son. So the king goes up to him and says, a very, when God says this word, you don't want to hear it. My friend, he said that to Judas, and he said one other place too, Jesus said that. My friend, when God says it's only three times in the gospel, when he says it, it's not good. God does not, you don't want to be called God's friend in this tone of voice. How come you came in here without a wedding garment? The king knows. The guy just shuts up. He can't say anything without condemning himself. So what does the king say? Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the darkness or he'll be wetting a brand new teeth. In other words, he's going to be thrown outside and if somebody doesn't feel like untying him, he's not going to get food or drink in real life. But we know this is not about real life. The other two are the same thing. It's not about real life. Yes, Jesus took two rabbinic teachings that they used to teach rabbis with, two stories, and he twisted them. So we have God the Father issuing an invitation to certain people to come to heaven, the wedding feast for his son. This doesn't happen as they die. It happens this life. And some of them, almost all of them say, nope, I want to be materialistic. I want to be consumeristic. I would care more about this thing of the earth than I do about that. I'm more focused on this life than the next. So it doesn't happen. The second invitation he sends out is before they die. We all have a chance to repent before we die. You have a chance to accept the invitation before we die. He sent out the first time what? Prophets. And what happened? They mistreated, they killed. The second time, he sent son. And what did they do? Killed him. So 
the scribes, the chief priests, the elders of the people are listening to the fact that, hey, I came for you. God the Father sent me to you so that you could get to heaven. And you're turning me down, so you're not going to go. So the king goes out, God goes out and asks Gentiles, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, pagans, atheists, come on in. And they come in because God is their father too. And he gives them, what is this wedding garment? It is this garment of righteousness. For us Catholics, it's the garment of baptism and confirmation, the sacraments. The garment of grace that we're supposed to keep unstained, clean, waiting for the time we go to the heavenly banquet and wear it then. Our soul. That's why we have confession. That's why we've been winning the last rites. But he finds somebody without that garment. Somebody who really doesn't believe in him. Somebody who really doesn't love him. That just wants to see what's happening. And he throws him out. This person has all their life denied God. Put themselves first. Put the things and the treasures of this earth first. They have put their politics ahead of God. They have put their culture and their nationality ahead of God. They have put everything ahead of God. They just want to sit there and be, well, I think I'll go. But guess what? At the judgment, which is what this is, God is going to say, because he wants to meet everybody, God is going to say, my friend. And then what does we say? Bind his hand and feet and put him in the darkness where he'll be wailing and grinding your teeth. That has always been Jesus' way of saying, hell, darkness is evil. Binding hand and foot, you have no more freedom. No freedom of choice, no freedom of anything. You will be cast into the darkness of hell. So God gives us a chance in this life, not just once, not just twice, but many times to accept his invitation to be at the wedding feast in the Cain in heaven. And it's up to us to keep that garment of righteousness, that wedding garment, clean. So it comes down to you cannot get to heaven at the wedding feast just by saying, I believe. Not just by saying, I'm a Christian. You can't just get there by doing that. You have to take and act. You have to put everything into action. We can't just get there by, I believe, or Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. I'm saved. No. We have to put that into action with our brothers and sisters here. Because what's not in the story, but is what is out, out throughout the gospel is, we are, help, we are responsible for helping each other get to the wedding feast. And we can only do that by putting our garment of righteousness, our faith, our grace that God gives us into practice. God bless you.
I believe. God invites us to his banquet of life. Let us ask his generous Father for all our needs. That the church on earth may thrive and grow and draw many to the feast of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That rich and poor alike may not make excuses to evade the call to the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our apostolic efforts we may provide the hungry with their share of God's bounty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be found worthy to come to the supper of the Lamb of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may live in the house of the Lord and rejoice in the banquet of eternal life, especially for Donald Zastro and Joanne Manuel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most generous Father, you call us to share your bounty. As we pray for others, help us to bring them with us to that banquet set forth by your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our operatory hymn is Christ Be Our Light. <laughs> sacrifice in yours be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Amen. Acceptable with the prayers of your faithful, with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, who had a compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from any death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. 
Dear indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather our people to yourself. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, if your sacrifice we offer to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, that you see holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and feel his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. He make of us an eternal offering to you, and we attain an inheritance with your elect. Especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, for St. Michael, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. For this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, and advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Sir Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family we have sung before you. Your compassionate and merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Turn to part your brothers and sisters, who all are pleasing to you their passing from this life, your kind of to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, and bestow on the world all. That is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, and only say the word and my soul shall be Our communion hymn is Taste and See.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty, most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in God. Be our protection against the wickedness of sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, to prowl about the world, seeking to ruin his souls. Amen. Most sacred Lord of Jesus. Most sacred Lord of Jesus. Most sacred Lord of Jesus. Our recessional hymn is City of God. <laughs> 